don't care. We can go ahead and start. <laughs> I want to greet you all. Beautiful Sabbath morning. Isn't that sunshine powerful? I suppose we will have people coming in, and that's fine. Well, that says we're on the air. All of you folk who are online, we welcome you this morning. The Sabbath School here at Spokane Central Church, we're delighted that you join us. And uh, can you believe it? This is the end of the first three months. This is the end of the first quarter. I just began to remember how to write 2024, and a fourth of it's gone. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Anyway, I just made a, a rough outline here of the quarter of, of the book of Psalms, just kind of divided it out. Because today, you're teaching me what this quarter has meant to you. You're teaching us. So um, I thought, you know, people need something to write down. What is the special chapter or the special verse that somebody has? You may want to make a note of that. So that's what the outline is for. It's for you. If you don't want to write anything down, make a paper airplane out of it. I don't care. It doesn't make any difference. Fly it off. But, wow. Have you been blessed by Psalms? I am just overwhelmed by what this quarter taught me about Psalms. It's amazing. It was something that I had chosen to do in, in like December, I'd made up my mind, okay, I'm going to go after Psalms. And I didn't realize that it was going to be a Sabbath school lesson. So the timing was, I said, okay, Lord, that's just exactly what I wanted to do. So um, I'm just, I'm still, this morning I enjoyed it so much just going through and reviewing again. And I know that some of you, if not all, have something special out of Psalms. So let's pray. And um, I, I think it's kind of the way we usually do things here to ask, is there something really on your heart that you'd like us to mention in prayer? You can let us know now. And are there mics around here? Do we have mics at all? There's a mic there. Or do you have anything over there at all? You have one there? You have one there? So there's the three. Do you have one, Ron? Is there one back there? There's one there. Okay, good. So there must be four then? Is that... I didn't know we had that many. That's great. That's great. <clears throat> okay. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in your goodness. We rejoice in your love for us and for your patience and your mercy and just for the opportunity to, to know you through your word. And uh, I thank you for these faithful students. And I pray, Lord, that you will bless us as together we just uh, review and share what this book of poetry, of music, of words can mean to us today. Please be present, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, I thought maybe to start out, we'd do a little uh, true and false quiz, just to kind of get things going. True or false? Poetry can be inspired by the Holy Spirit as certainly as prophecy. True or false? That's pretty clear. How many of you think that's true? How many of you think that's false? Absolutely. Book of Psalms is poetry, right? And it is inspired. Jesus believed in and memorized the Psalms. Would you say that's true or false? Do we have evidence that he memorized the Psalms? 
Grab a mic and tell me why. He did quote from him occasionally, so. Okay, do you, uh, do you have anything specific in mind when you say that? The most, I'm just gonna say the prophets, probably. But it's amazing. Um, Here's a, here's a couple of verses for you. Luke 24, 44, and 45. <clears throat> if somebody would uh, get their Bible and, and read that. Luke 24, 44, and 45. Coming up. Then he said to them. Now, who's them? Who's him? Who's speaking? Jesus is speaking. Must be right. Jesus. Okay, go ahead. These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Yes. And he opened their understanding, their that they might comprehend the scriptures. So you notice there, right along with Moses, right along with the other prophets, we have the Psalms mentioned. And this is the commission that Jesus was giving the disciples there in the book of Luke. And I just find it really interesting. The Psalms was right there along with the, the rest of the Old Testament. Um, we, I think, occasionally kind of overlook the Psalms. Um, Another true and false. The Psalms are wonderful for personal meditation or congregational use. Okay? Everybody agree with that? Do we, do we use them in the, in the um, worship that we have together as, as, a, as a group? We use them a lot, actually. And they, they lend themselves to that, don't they? Okay, the Psalms focus on joy and music and avoid hardship and trial. True or false? Grab a mic. Somebody's saying no. Somebody's saying false. They have a lot about joy and music, and that's wonderful, but they also cover the, the other side, the that all of us experience, so that's why it's a blessing, I think, that we can understand what he's saying. When you say the other side, Carol, what do you mean? Well, the down, downside. The depressing. downside. Yeah. Good, yes. Pardon? Toils and yes. Toils and snares that we have. Yes, and difficulties that we encounter. Um, I mean, you stop and think about it. I mean, did David have any difficulties in his life? <laughs> He couldn't very well talk about his life without talking about some difficulties, could he? I don't think so. <laughs> um, you know, I never checked which page. I have a teacher's quarterly, and I think the pagination is a little different, but um, I noticed on page nine of the quarterly, and that would be, that would be, January 3, where it talks about inspired prayers. Wednesdays. It's Wednesdays, that's right. The Psalms are intense prayers and praises of Israel. And so in the Psalms, the voice is that of God intermingled with that of his people. Um, the Psalms assume the dynamics of vivid interactions with God. I really like that idea. I, you notice they're just a little lower. It talks about the psalmist often implores God, 
Give ear. In other words, listen to me. <laughs> Hear my prayer. Look. Answer me. Deliver me. You ever feel like that with, with God in your prayer time? Lord, I just, I don't know if I'm getting through or not, you know? Uh, there's an intensity to it that I think Psalms uniquely uh, holds out to us. And then down at the very end of that page, down at the bottom, in other words, as you read the Psalms, you will find them expressions of hope, of praise, of fear, of what else? Ang anger? Does David get angry sometimes? Yeah, he does. Do we ever get angry? Do you ever get angry at God and say, I don't understand what's going on here, but it doesn't make sense to me, and it's hurting, or whatever, right? Yes. Um, sadness and sorrow. Things that people everywhere in every age, no matter the circumstances, they speak to us all in the language of our own experience. And I, I think that's one of the reasons why Psalms are so powerful. Okay, here's another one. And I don't know, I, 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 I'm kind of stuck on nickel quizzes because when I went to school, they did nickel quizzes all the time. Five true and false kind of thing or something. So th this is number five, here it is. David wrote all the Psalms sang them and organized them into a Psalter. True or false? Why is it false? Well, first, David didn't write them all. He wrote most of them. Okay, did you learn that this quarter? Uh, no, I learned that prior, but... Okay. Um, yeah, they... Uh, he, he... And, yes, he did sing and praise a lot of them, and he wrote them for some of them. He wrote some of them for kings. That's true. Yes. So. so if you have your quarterlies there, this would be, I thought this was very helpful as an overview. Uh, so this is kind of a, a review for us again here. But page 13, well, you won't have this one, will you? I don't think you did. I'm sorry. When I chose this one, that was a not a good choice. Um, eleven, page eleven. You will have that one for sure. How many books are there actually in the Psalms? Does anybody remember that? No. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. How many books are there? The uh, the, the Psalms are broken into. Segments, and they're called books. Do you remember how many? There's 150 chapters. Yeah, 150 chapters. That's good. Um, how many? There are, there are books. Look on page. On Friday, uh, January 5, notice in the quarterly, you'll see it there right at the first paragraph. 150 psalms, and they're grouped into... Five books, and they are one to four, and then or 41, I should say, and then uh, book two, 42 to 72, and so forth, 73 to 89, 90 to 106, and 107 to 150. Now, usually we don't, you know, we don't think about it in, that, in those terms, but they all came at different historical times, and they kind of fit together. And so it's just kind of nice to be aware. Uh, notice the third paragraph. While most psalms are associated with the time of King David and early monarchy, which means 10th century, or about 1,000 years before Jesus, keep that in mind, the collection of psalms continued to grow through the following centuries. So you have the divided monarchy, the exile, the post-exilic time, you know, when the people were being scattered, all of the, the Jews were being scattered all over the world, it is conceivable that the Hebrew scribes, under the leadership of whom? Of Ezra. We don't think much about him being involved in the Psalms, but apparently he had a lot more to do with than, than we realized. Combine the existing smaller collections of Psalms into one book when they worked on establishing the services of the 
new temple. They wanted them for worship. See? So it's kind of nice to have that as a, as a background. Um, and I thought Ellen White's statement here in The Great Controversy really kind of sums it up. The divine human nature of the Psalms is comparable to the union of the divine and the human in the incarnate Lord Jesus. But the Bible, with its God-given truths expressed in the language of men, presents a union of the divine and the human. Such a union existed in the nature of Christ, who was the Son of God and the Son of Man. So it is true of the Bible, as it was of Christ, that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So, something else I just have to make you aware of. How many of you are aware of the International, the Seventh-day Adventist International Bible Commentary? They're new. They're not even totally finished. But this just finished not too long ago, and I got a hold of one late last year. This is on the book of Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. And there are half a dozen different authors, all people who handle the Hebrew and the Greek and that kind of thing. So they, they're, they're working in original languages. And guess one, who one of the major authors of this book is? The very same lady who is the author of our quarterly. Dragoslav, you notice, notice her name? Santra or Santrak? I, I don't know if I'm saying her name, name right, but Dragoslava, Dragoslava Santrak. Um, and she's the author of this, and she's one of the main authors of this. It's, it's simply called the uh, Seventh-day Adventist International Bible Commentary. And, and, and they're doing all of the Bible. But this one was just finished. So they're in process with this. I have the book of Genesis. I tell you, folks, if you want to have fun, do Genesis or, or, or do this. I, it is absolutely awesome. Um, because they're working in, like, the Hebrew language, the language in which it was written. And it... It opens up things that I've never, ever thought about before. It's just like, oh my, I wish I could go back. I wish I could go back to seminary and start all over again because it's got such a wonderful uh, insights, just amazing. So had to mention that to you because this is kind of, a, I don't know why, it seems to be one of our best kept secrets. I don't know why they're not talking about it more. But this is volume six. Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. So, did you all get one of these? Okay, anybody not get one of these? That's what I should ask. Okay, you can make notes on it if you like. If you do not want to make notes on it, like I said, make a paper airplane and fly it. You don't have to bother, but... I thought you might want to just hear from each other a little bit and make some notes about what stands out to you. And really, that's, that's what I said I wanted to do, is to allow you an opportunity to share um, something that you have found. Anyone, is there a chapter in the Psalms that is special to you? And could you tell us why? Yes, Loretta. I need you to have a mic, though, so that everybody can hear. Thank you, Holly. Psalm 121. Psalm 121. All right. Psalm 121. Well, many years ago when I was 50, in my 50s, I was uh, homeless in Portland, Oregon, and I was, uh, well, I was in a shelter then, but I was riding on the city bus, and I saw this old guy, he looked like a hobo, and he was really happy reading something, 
and I was sitting by him, and he was reading. He said, I'm reading Psalm 121. And so I had, I never read it before. So okay. when I read it, I said, that's so amazing. What was it that stood out to you that morning? No. Do you remember? It was him. He was so happy reading that piece of paper. Oh, he? He had it written down. Okay. And it really stuck in my mind afterwards. Okay. I thought that was pretty neat, and I read it, and I never read it before. Well, I think it's pretty wonderful, too. Is there any part, or do you, do you want us to read the, it's not that long, it's eight verses only. I can read it if you want me to. Okay. Okay. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he keeps is who, behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil, he shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going in and your coming in, your com the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. <clears throat> How did that make a difference? It made a whole difference in my life because yeah. I was homeless then. So that was very significant yeah. to you. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Anyone else? Who's next? Yes, Lin Linda. I'm reading, I'm reading time. 22. Okay, Psalm 22. Let me get over there. I want to see that. Okay. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the root of my ruin? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you hear not, and in the night season, and I have not sound. But you are holy, or you that inhabit the places of Israel. Our fathers trust in you. They trust and you did give them. They cried on, unto you, to you and were given. They trust in you and were not confounded. But I am a worm and no man a report of men and despite of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, He struck on the norm that he will deliver him. Okay, Linda. Let him deliver him, saying he delight in him. But you are he that took me out of the womb. You may, did make me whole when I was on my mother's okay, breast. Okay, Linda. Linda, it's too long to read the entire chapter, but what does that chapter mean to you? He died on the cross at me. And I don't have to do it, but he did it all for me. So you, you think this chapter then really speaks of Jesus on the cross, right? Yes. So do we have evidence that Jesus studied the Psalms? Yes, we do. Some of his dying words was the first part of that one. Yes, they are, aren't they? I mean, you, you read in the Gospels and you can't help but think of Psalm 22. Yes. Powerful. When did you discover that? Whenever I read the chapter 22, it reminds me of Jesus on the cross saying, my God, my God, why, why have you forsaken me? Yes. 
Thank you very much for sharing that. So Linda's special psalm there, Psalm 22. I want to give others an opportunity. Yes? My favorite psalm is 71. 71. It's a, it's a long one. Pick out something, pick out a verse or two or, or, or an idea. What is it that makes it so special? It makes it, it makes it so special because uh, it says right um, just where is it uh, it that you are my rock and you're my fortress mm. and you know uh, oh God you have taught me from my earliest childhood I'm a preacher kid so. And I've known the Lord. I saw my first miracle when I was three, so I knew God. So this so speaks to your experience. This, this is me. Yeah. And then uh, playing music with a, a harp. I have a harp, so I have a oh, sultry. How about, how about I love, that? And I love praising the Lord all the time. That's wonderful. So it's, it, it, it really talks. It, it has a lot of me in that song. Amen. Thank you. Anyone else? Or it could be that it doesn't come directly out of your experience, but let's say during this past three months, we've been looking at a lot of the psalms. Was there anything that especially spoke to you, that, that moved you, that maybe even caused you to pray differently? I don't know. But did this quarter do anything to change your walk with God? We want to hear about that. Yes, Loretta? Okay, I want to tell you about another experience I had. This is in Psalm 91. Psalms 91. Yep. I was leaving a domestic violence situation in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and I was fleeing this one day. I went to the bus depot to catch a bus to uh, Portland, Oregon, and my abuser was there. He, he found me inside the bus depot, and he said, you're going to come with me? And I said, no, I'm not. I, I said, okay, I'll go with you. And then I, then I, I had this memorized. Psalm 91? Yeah, it was a uh, start with 14. I had this memorized. And so I really wasn't afraid. And I, okay, I'll read this. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show, show him my salvation. Yeah. I was really afraid because I thought he was going to drag me out the side door. So I said, okay, I'll go with you. And the policeman was outside. And I said, here he is. And he latched on to him, and I caught the bus to Portland, Oregon. <laughs> so that psalm really is important. <laughs> I was really afraid because he was crazy. What do you think, you folk who are listening to, to, to Loretta, is that, is, that, um, is that a valid way to use the Psalms? Huh? Yes, Absolutely when it is, afraid. yes. It's to be there for us when we need it. Why do you think God gave it to us? We live in a sin-filled world and things can be very bad sometimes. Thank you, Loretta. Yes. I have. Just have another one here. Carol? Well, I'm impressed with Loretta's bravery, that's for <laughs> sure. But Psalm 91 is one that I memorized many years ago, too, and I love it. And during this COVID thing, <laughs> okay. it says that no plague will come nigh your dwelling. Yes. And I used to just remind God of that. And my, neither of us ever got COVID. Praise and the Lord. we just thank him for that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> thank you. Anyone else that hasn't spoken, just try to, I, I want to get as many of you as possible to uh, tell us what the Psalms are doing in your life. As you went through the, during the, the quarter, was there anyone that you especially marked or especially was helpful to you? Or maybe you even, I don't know if you do what I do, but I have a way with a red pencil of changing the looks of my Bible pages. 
and I marked a lot of those, highlighted a lot of them. And uh, so, anyone else? I want to leave anyone out? George? How about a, how about a mic? How, oh, that's fine. It can be even 91. We just want to know how 91 affects George. Well, I was, when they mentioned 91, I went there and I, I read the whole book of Psalms. Sure. A year, a year and a half ago. Anyway, so I did highlight uh, Psalms 91, 1 and 2. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. What does that mean to you? It means that he is my protector. Amen. Amen. Wherever I go. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Do any of you, do, did any of you uh, uh, recognize during this past quarter that David have, had a way of saying, when you're in trouble, go to the Lord. Do you, do you notice that? He often says, if you're in trouble, call on him. In fact, did I mark that here somewhere? Uh, I mean, there are dozens of places. I couldn't believe how many. Um, uh, 34, 17. You all know Psalm 34, I think. At least parts of it. What's the verse that comes out of 34 that... Almost everybody knows. Yes, what is it? What is seven? The angel. Yeah, Mike, please. <laughs> I'll read it. Okay. For three. the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fears him. Yes. So when we're in trouble, it, um, David just says this over and over again in the Psalms. Call on me. Um, uh, 3417 in the, the Net Bible, the New English Translation says, The godly cry out and the Lord hears. He saves them from all their troubles. That's what I wanted to mention. When you read David, notice how often he was in trouble and he knew where to turn to and he often prayed and sang his way through it and out of it. We ever get in those circumstances? Of course we do. Of course we do. Let me tell you one experience I had. Anybody, um, anybody ever heard of Psalm 23? <laughs> well, you know, I've, I've been, it's been in my memory for years and years, but one day... I had the assignment from my family to go pick up the remains of my little granddaughter that I never knew because she died as a blue baby. And I was, I was standing there with the urn in my hand and I walked by the chapel of that funeral home right here in Spokane and they were having a, a service and I still remember this pastor, shock of white hair, standing on the platform. And just as I was walking past the open door, he started, the Lord is my shepherd. And it just froze me in my tracks. And I stood there with the urn in my hand, and I heard Psalm 23 as I'd never heard it before or since but it is embedded in my, in my memory. Those kinds of experiences, they are, they are ours to cherish, aren't they? That they become a part of us. They increase our faith. So, anyway, Psalm 23. How many of you memorized at least parts of Psalm 23 at some time? Let me see your hands. Good, okay. Anyone else um, that hasn't participated? Okay. Uh, now, I believe it was a hand. Was it your hand? Oh, I remember. 
I remember that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, um, um, Psalms 13 was very important to me. Psalm 13. Because uh, after, I've, I've heard the Lord and the Holy Spirit since I was a child, and at, when I had my stroke, I uh -huh. lost that. Okay. I lost that, and I cried, and I would cry, and 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 this one day I just, I just opened the I just opened the Bible and went right to Psalms 13, and it's like God spoke to me. Specifically, what is there in Psalm 13 that that really touches your core, your your heart? Is is uh, it's because he's he's crying out to the Lord himself. It says, "How long, um, oh, how long will you f you forget me?" Mm. And I felt forgotten. Yeah, I was going to say, "You ever feel forgotten?" Hey, yes. And um, how long, how long must I struggle with the anguish in my soul? Yeah, yeah. And and how long will the enemy? Have have the upper hand on me, okay, and then uh, and it's saying, please restore, restore the sparkle in my eyes, amen. And I have trust and unfailing love. I rejoice because you have rescued me, and yes. I will sing to the Lord because He is good to me. Wonderful, amen. And it was like it; He was telling me. I'm here, I'm speaking to you. Mm. He found another way to speak to me until I got that ability back. Amen. Amen. He walked through that experience with you. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Praise to God. Been. You know, there's a psalm that I ran across that uh, I th it, it, it speaks to me, and I think as I look at you here, it's, it, it should speak to most of us in this room. Uh, go to Psalm 71 with me, and let, let's look at verse, which verse was that? 18. 71, 18. And be ready, folks. I'm still looking for those who haven't shared anything yet. Some of you need to share something with us here. 71, 18. Even when I am old and gray, oh God, do not abandon me until I tell the next generation about your strength and those coming after me about your power. Now, you know, uh, I qualify. <laughs> And, and most of you in here qualify too. Some more than others, perhaps. But we're all getting there if we're still here. And I just, uh, I'll tell you, it gives a reason to live. Sometimes people say, well, you know, what, what do you do? That's what I want to do right there. That verse says it. Speaks to my heart. That's what, I don't want anything else to crowd that out of my life. It starts with my own kids and my own grandkids. But it goes way beyond that. Doesn't say anything about just my family, does it? Yeah. Okay. Someone who hasn't shared yet some psalm, something that touched your life in this past quarter that we need to know about. Anyone? Yes. Diana here. Well, um, one of my favorites, because it was a favorite when I was a kid. Okay, that's okay. fine. Is that okay? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> it's Psalm 121. 121. Okay, Psalm 121. Look and it up. It, if you have your Bibles open, look it up. It says, I look to the mountains. Does my help come from there? Yeah. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. And it just talks about how God never sleeps. He's always watching. He's always there. And that was one of my favorite things about God is just how accessible he is. He's Amen. always there. It doesn't matter where I am. Amen. He is always there. And so this one I have read, I don't know how many times in my life, but it's always been really special to me. It's kind of one of those go-tos. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you, Diane. That's, 
That is so special. And you know what? There are some of you looking at me with, I don't know if it's on belief or if it's just, well, I've never been in the habit of doing this. I'm not sure. But some of you have not said yay, nay, or anything. And I'm not going to let you squirm out of this class without saying to you, you need to take the time to personalize it in your life. Please. That's the way scripture gets up and walks. And it walks, it travels with you. So how do you do that? Well, one of the ways, I get these little, I call them recipe cards. I don't know, my wife says that's not accurate, but anyway. About this size. And I simply write the verse on the card. And the card goes into my shirt pocket. And where I go, it goes. And when I have a little time here, or a little time, sometimes, sometimes uh, you know, between appointments or whatever, even waiting for someone else, that card comes out and I look at it and I continue to work on it until it's mine. I've captured it. Some of you are shaking your head. You know what I'm talking about. It's called memorization. <laughs> and it's just, but it's, you know, Ellen White in Desire of Ages, and I was going to bring that quote and forgot it, um, around 300 or so. But she mentions, take a verse and, and, and just live with it until it is yours. Make it yours. It becomes a part of your life. That's what we need with Scripture, brothers and sisters. This is wonderful. But I can't carry this around with me wherever I am. So putting it on a card. Pastor Greg showed us. I, I, I just love this. I hope you do, and I hope you're using it. Yes. I hope you use it. Don't throw it away. Don't get it piled underneath a bunch of other papers. Make sure it's on top. Okay? Uh, just keep it with you. Because... That is, that's when scripture really becomes, and Diana's testimony here is she said the same thing, essentially. She started as a girl to do it. But you can start now, folks. You know, when, when Gail and I were at the uh, village church in, in uh, College Place, we had a couple there. He, had, he was a retired university, Adventist university president. He'd been president of... Um, PUC, Pacific Union College, before she and I went there. And um, he and his wife lived in the retirement center there in College Place, and I think um, they were well into their 90s when we knew them. We used to just, we used to just have more fun. They had their little, their little card stacks, and they'd take it and they'd split it. She'd take half, he'd take half. She'd pull out the card, she'd give him the verse, and he had to say, say it. And then they'd swap, you know. He'd quiz her, he'd have the card, and she'd start the verse. And I'm telling you, their stack was not little. Their stack was amazing to me. Well into their 90s. They were upper 90s when we knew them. And I've, I've, I saw them do that often. It was amazing to watch. So, folks, there's nobody here that has an excuse to say, I'm too old to do that. I can't do that anymore. I just can't memorize. Really? You tried? Ask God to help you. Ask him. Tell him, look, I want your word to be a part of me. I don't want to just have it out there. I want it to be a part of me. And if you've heard these testimonies this morning, every one of them has spoken to the moment when they needed this, and it was theirs. So, I guess I'm just saying, no excuses. Do it, and ask God to help you, and you'll surprise yourself. Because after you do it for a while, you know, there comes a time when I don't have to go back anymore and check myself. It's there. That's cool when that happens, you see. Yeah. Okay? With me? Does that make sense?
I hope so. There's one psalm that I would like to point out to you that really blessed me this quarter, and I really didn't know it before. Psalm 46. I think it speaks to our day and our time, and what really helped me was this, was this commentary I was telling you about. This is the new Seventh-day Adventist International Commentary, and this one is on Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. So I thought, okay, I, because I was into this chapter one week, I don't remember which week it was, and I, I thought, well, I wonder what the commentary says about it, because there's part of it there that's always given me a little bit of a hard time. So I went to it, and it cleared it up. So I just want to point out to you, uh, 46, 1 to 11, it's not terribly long. I'm not going to read all of it, but um, God is our secure shelter. He is truly our helper in times of trouble. For this reason, we do not fear when the earth shakes and the mountains tumble into the depths of the sea and when its waves crash and foam and the mountains shake before the surging sea. Does it sound anything like our time? We've got a lot of mountains that seem to be kind of crumbling. I'm not just talking about physical mountains right now either. A lot of things that we've kind of believed in and trusted in, and they seem to be falling apart. Um, then it says in verses 4 and 5, the irrigation canals flowing from the river bring joy to the city of God, the special holy dwelling place of the sovereign one. God lives within it. It cannot be upended. God rescues it at the break of dawn. Commentary indicates that this really goes back to the book of Genesis where God provided the water supply there as a kind of a natural irrigation system that kept all the different parts of that country watered. So that's what God's original plan was, but notice what's happening. Nations, verse 6, make a commotion. Kingdoms are upended. God gives a battle cry, the earth dissolves. The Lord, the invincible warrior, is on our side. The God of Jacob is our protector. Come, witness the exploits of the Lord who brings devastation to the earth. He brings an end to wars throughout the earth. He shatters the bow and breaks the Spear, he burns the shields. He says, Stop, you striving, and recognize that I am God. I will be exalted over the nations. I will be exalted over the earth. The Lord, the invincible warrior, is on our side. The God of Jacob is our protector. So, we're in a world that's falling apart, it's growing old like a garment. It's, and there's a lot of the institutions that we trust in, you know, that seem to be more and more under question, and you be, after a while you begin to say, what's, what's going on? Um, God had an original plan. It all came to nothing because of sin, and God is working in and through all of this. He is bringing all of these wars to an end. He, there is a final conclusion to all of this. There's a new heaven. There's a new earth. And we can trust in him. Stop your striving and recognize that I am God. So I think, you know, as Adventists, I think uh, Psalm 46 has something to teach us today in this time of uncertainty and fearfulness. This chapter here is for our personal growth and trust. So I challenge you to spend a little time on that one. I think you'd be blessed by it. Okay, what? Yeah, ten minutes. Okay, is anybody uh, anybody else? Anyone else with a psalm that you 
may be discovered for the first time or a, an old one that you could share with us how it touched your life. Anyone? Okay. How about um, right close there? How about uh, Psalm 90? You know who wrote Psalm 90? Beautiful. It, it, it's uh, profound and it's, it is very, very beautiful. And notice um, who the author is. Anybody notice? Yes, Moses. Moses, the author. Oh, sovereign master, you have been our protector through all generations. Even before the mountains came into existence, or you brought the world into being, you were the eternal God. So there are these chapters that uh, just uplift God in a way that it's hard to find places that it can excel it. And, you know, Moses was the one who wrote all about the creation. So it's kind of, you know, you'd kind of expect that out of him. But that chapter 90 is very, very powerful. How about, um, how about Psalm 103? Anybody remember Psalm 103? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his... Can you just hear, David? I mean, that is his whole heart. Okay? Who forgives all your iniquities, heals all your diseases, redeems you from um, this destruction, crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, satisfies your mouth with good things. Wow. Folks, those verses are worth memorizing. Huh? They're worth memorizing. Entire chapter. He likens mankind to the grass and the flowers. They're here to, you know, it's wildflower season right now, but give it a few hot days and you know what happens to the wildflowers, right? Grass, same thing. But God, he says, from the east to the west, so great is his mercy toward them that love him. So he can't, he just paints God in such, in such pictures that you, you, you can't feel indifferent about him because he's everywhere around us and in us. Um, there's a... There's a psalm that, or, or a verse. Well, maybe before I do that one. Um, you want to know a psalm that's great for your prayer life? Psalm 63. Psalm 63, check it out. This is a... There are a number of, actually, these psalms that are just fit into prayer in such a wonderful way. But Psalm 63 is, is such a great way to start even with your prayer. Oh, God, you are my God. I long for you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you in a dry, parched land where there is no water. You know, he spent a lot of time in the Judean wilderness, and I'm telling you, I only visited there a couple of times. I do not want to ever have to live there. That is the driest, most just not very attractive at all land. He spent a lot of time hiding out from Saul and other things. Notice he, he with the kind of longing that he had for a good glass of water. He was longing for God's presence. So, yes, yes, there was rescue involved, wasn't there? 
So there's this whole variety of um, opportunities that we have to make our spiritual life come alive out of the Psalms. Um, one verse that that I have often referred to in prayer, and it kind of stands by itself for me for whatever reason. <clears throat> in fact, I should read it out of my I should read it out of my old King James. Psalm 143, verse, Psalm 148, verse 3, 143, verse 8. Here's a great way to start, the, start your morning. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Now, I know that's old English. But that's the way I memorized it. <laughs> so, you know, that's the way it goes. But it's a great way to, to start a prayer. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. I mean, what do you want me to do today, Lord? You ever feel like asking? I mean, you must ask God that sometimes, right? What do you want me to do today? That's what David's doing. Lord, how do you want me to walk today? Want me to go this way? What about that way? You know? So, built-in prayer request from David. Cause me to know the very, the, the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. Uh, let's see. Well, you know what? Our time is gone. And maybe one of the nicest ways to conclude would be to go right to the end of the Psalms and go to chapter 150. Psalm 150, and we'll conclude right there. David says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the sky, which testifies to his strength. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him within the blast of the, of the horn. Praise him with the lyre and the harp. Praise him with the tambourine and with dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and the flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can't go wrong on that. Well, we have a very interesting quarter ahead of us looking at the great controversy theme. And uh, Mark Finley certainly has studied a lot of that throughout his life. So I just pray that you will have a good quarter studying. Um, but one final plea, take the time to memorize. Don't try the impossible. Find a verse that you find very significant to you Get it on a little card or something that you can keep handy and say, Lord, I need your help. I want to make this mine. And the Holy Spirit will help you do that. And I'll guarantee you, you will be blessed for having it. Okay? God bless you, each one. Let's have prayer. Lord, for the word of God, we are so grateful. And for these book of Psalms that that uh, are for all of the different circumstances of our life. We just praise you that it is there for us. Help us not to walk by just window shopping. Please help us, Lord, to internalize at least some of these.
that will help us on our walk with you and as we share with others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.